Happy 4th of July, Lead Head. This is the special Talking Lead Independence Day edition. And we've got a good one for you this episode. Lots of giveaways, lots of great information, and we've got celebrity guests joining us today. <laughs> as, as he kind of frowns on that. <laughs> so, if you didn't get a chance, make sure you go to last episode where, uh, you know, with all these trying times and, you know, the stressful days, I thought it'd be a good uh, episode to talk about you know, mental health. And we had Mike Sodini with Walk the Talk America, uh, who is uh, the founder of that 2A mental health organization where they're bridging the gap between the 2A community and uh, the mental health community. So great information there from Mike. And then we also had our good buddy, Sergeant Major Lance Nutt with Sheepdog Impact Assistance. And uh, him talking about all the great things that they are doing for our military law enforcement, first responder men and women, uh, not only for uh, the mental stability and to help prevent suicides, but to just to help keep them active and busy and get getting them off the couch because that's their natural calling is to, to be busy and to be active. So go back, check that episode out. And then we made the announcement that we're going to be giving away that Haley strategic flashlight. And, uh, as you're listening to this, we have given that away. So I hope you caught our live feed that we did with two twelve training group, uh, in giving away that. And then I made the announcement that also, this is the episode where we're making the announcement. Finally, we're doing we're doing the big giveaway uh, with Mission First Tactical, Caltech Weapons, Buck Knives, Fioki Ammo. Am I forgetting somebody? I'm talking lead and and us, of course, and and talking lead. Uh, where we're giving away these awesome prizes, and to to help me make this big announcement and kick it off, we've brought in the man himself. David Edelman with Mission First Tactical. David? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. So we're doing a Talking Lead and Friends giveaway for Independence Day. You can find the link for the entry form uh, at the Talking Lead Facebook page or, or on any of the Facebook pages for, for, the, for the vendors giving stuff away. We're going to make posts on Instagram. It's going to be on our website. So you'll have several places to, to link in. If you don't have Facebook or if you got Instagram or you got Facebook, you don't have Instagram, Whatever, we're going to make it easy. And, of course, all all the participants are going to have links on their sites as well. And this is uh, is almost a month long, so we're going to kick it off July 3rd, and we are going to end it the 25th, and then uh, we're going to make announcements for the winners uh, that following Friday on the 31st. And there's only one winner, right? There is only one grand prize winner. One winner yeah. is going to win all these amazing prizes. And, <laughs> and our, our guests who have not announced yet, let me go ahead and announce who our guest, who our celebrity guest is uh, this episode. It's none other than our good buddy and longtime leadhead, Keith Garcia, ladies and gentlemen. Hey guys, how are you? It's pretty low bar for celebrity though. Oh no, man! I mean, you rub you rub elbows with the celebrities too. I mean, you're in that mix. I mean, you're making your own films and instructional videos, and you know, you're you're a trainer to the stars. <laughs> well, thank you. I probably appreciate that. Hey, I'm excited. I, I want to hear the details about this giveaway. What, what's all in the package? Oh, here we go. Dave is getting ready to hit us with that right now. All right. So Caltech was nice enough to donate a CP thirty P. CP-33. It's a business in the front, party in the rear pistol, 22 <laughs> target pistol, holds 33 rounds. So that's that's a lot of plinking fun right now. Yeah. MSRP is 475 and I'd say good luck finding one. And it's but they can get one get here out. in this contest. And it costs them that's what? Right. It costs them nothing to enter. Just a little bit of time. Bit we of made time it super effort. easy with the app. It's got to follow the links. Uh, for that pistol, Mission First created a truly one-of-a-kind handmade holster. It's an outside-the-waistband holster. You will get uh, loops and clips. And uh, we went ahead and did a custom uh, design on it as well. So it's truly one-of-a-kind. The value there, I can't put an MSRP on it because it is truly one-of-a-kind. It's priceless. You would be the it only is- person in the world 
to have a mission first tactical that is designed for the CP 33 and especially with that logo on there, that design. Yeah. That custom design helps it. It's, it pops. And then Bob, Buck Nyes was nice enough to throw in one of their 119 special 75th anniversary, uh, fixed blades. You yeah. uh, shouldn't, shouldn't need much description there. You know, it was one of Hoyt Buck's first knife designs. He dialed it in after over the, the next 40 years. And, uh, MSRP is 65 bucks, but again, this is a collector's item that's no longer being sold. So, so that value is like a lot more than that. When it was originally out, it was 65 bucks, but they don't make these anymore. So, like David said, it's a collector's item, and it's it's one of those priceless ones as well. Yes, sir. And then Fiocchi Ammunition was nice enough to throw in a gift certificate for a Plano box filled with 1,575 rounds of 22 rounds to. 33 rounds to a clip, you're going to run through that pretty quick, but you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> Whoever so wins this, me. I want them to time it. I want them to go through that whole uh, 1,500 rounds and see how long it takes them. <laughs> what were you going to say, Keith? Sounds to me like that's a bunch of great stuff. Plus, you can't get it. I mean, that you, know, you can get it free here, but you can't go to the store and buy any of this stuff right now. So that's awesome. No, no. Yeah. But wait, there's more. Oh, so that has a, a 109.99 MSRP value, and Fiocchi says it's uh, superior ammo. You're not going to deal with duds, failures uh, to function, or excessive powder found. It's, that, Caltech, it's that tradition that Fiocchi is known for. You know, good quality ammo at an affordable price. Hell yeah. Sponsors of the Talking Lip Podcast. Shameless plug. Okay. Got to get them in. Keltec, Keltec was also nice enough to throw in one of their CL43 flashlights. So it's designed to be used in conjunction with a firearm. It's a, it's a CNC machined 6061 aluminum body with 420 lumens and an MSRP of $140. And I just flashed the guys with mine. I've got several uh, of these flashlights. I love them. I've got them in uh, just about every one of my bug out bags. I've got them in the car. Uh, you know, keep them in my gym bag. Great, easy, quick, accessible flashlights. Uh, and I don't know what color. What color did they send? You know, uh, we got the photo. It's black. The black one. Okay. It's a black one. But they've got multiple colors in those too, so you can go and pick out your favorite color. Um, but the one and you're going to get is black. Uh, <laughs> you can paint it. You can cerakote it. It's metal. Hold. Yeah. And then uh, the, what else the, we got? The last. The last of the prize is Mission First Tactical threw in a uh, dump tray to keep all your prizes organized. With your favorite podcast logo, so you get a nice big talking lead dump tray. Looks great on your dresser or your nightstand or even in your truck. Hell yeah. So one winner is going to get all those. And, I mean, the value somewhere around, what, about a 1000 bucks or so? Somewhere yep. in the neighborhood of 1000 bucks. especially when yep. you add and, in uh, the, uh, the, the holster. You know, that holster is probably $500 by itself. I'm telling you. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that couple of... Scrape fingers too. Hell yeah! And just you know, never you can't and you can't you can't go buy this stuff right now. I mean, the holster's custom. You never could. The knife's no longer made, so you couldn't do that either. But good luck trying to to find that pistol out there to buy it and the, the ammo to go with it. Just there you go. So uh, again, this is going to be one of those those gleam competitions, I guess we'll call it. And you go and you like Facebook pages, Instagram pages, share, repost. Uh, and you get more entries. So the more of those you do, the more entries you get, the better your chances are to win. And it's going to be completely random. It's computer generated there through the Gleam system. And then, as David said, we're going to announce the winner. Is it uh, July 31st? July 31st on the Talking Lead podcast. On the podcast. Uh, we're not going to do a live because David and I are very technically challenged, and every time we try to we do tried a, that, <laughs> we try to do a live video, it it bombs. <laughs> yeah, it never works right. It never does. It never does. So there you go, guys. Uh, make sure that uh, you're you're tuning in Fourth uh, of July. If you got friends that listen to the show, make sure that you tell them to go and listen to this. If they're like five shows behind, tell them to skip ahead because they don't want to miss out on this. It's going to be an awesome giveaway. We're giving you plenty of time to uh, to get in and participate and win. 
So looking for a lot of you lead heads participating with this and sharing with your family and your friends and let them know about it too. You don't just have to be a listener. You can you can extend this out to everybody. Most of our contests are just for our listeners, but we're ex- we're going to extend this one out to everyone. Very good, David. That's awesome. So that's only been in the making for about a year now. Oh, man. <laughs> COVID. Look, all I can say is COVID. Everybody knows COVID. Oh, man. I mean, just life. Life happens. But uh, we finally got it together, thanks to David and his crew there. Did a fabulous job with the photos and, and getting the Gleam contest together. So thank you guys for doing that, David. Happy to do it. The Fiocchi family has been producing high-quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi is launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long-range categories. The Fiocchi Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self-defense, featuring lead-free technology and the only NATO-certified zero-pollution primer in the world. Fiocchi is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fiocchi trains... Yoki protects. All right, so uh, I think we're ready to do some some jack wagons. I hear that train rolling in, so Gunny's getting he's getting antsy. He's wanting to take care of some of these jack wagons we got rolling around here. Gunny, bring that train in. Who uh, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at eight and nine. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week. So brace yourself, baby. All right, so the train has stationed. And I think most everybody's not going to be surprised with the jack wagons that we have. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with Keith. We're going to let our All guests right. go it, first. It, it is a target-rich environment. And uh, so I made a quick list because, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out who really deserves it. Oh, so God uh, forbid. <laughs> if you don't mind, if, you, if you'll indulge me. Yes, sir. Uh, in, in no particular order, uh, Antifa. <laughs> because they're all punks and <laughs> they, they, they just, you know, they'll only attack police officers because they know the police are going to use restraint. You don't see them going out there and doing anything else. And if they're challenged, they'll, they'll run away like little girls. Uh, everyone at CNN, the mayor of New York, de Blasio, he just, uh, you know, they decided they're going to cut a billion dollars from the police budget. And those of us who are old enough to remember the, you know, the problems of the seventies and the eighties, we'll see how that goes. Oh, uh, man. the mayor yeah. and the police chief in Seattle, cause they're all, just ridiculous letting people take over their city and uh, the city council of minnesota or i'm sorry minneapolis who wants to uh de- actually voted to defund their police department again uh not going to happen not going to work uh you're just going to have mass chaos uh, watch the the purge series movies to see if you, you know if you <laughs> know exactly what's going to happen i mean and, if ever uh, there was a movie that would portray what it would be without police that's the one right i agree so, uh, but the, the worst one of the week, uh, the prosecutor in St. Louis, who after even the police officer, the police chief said there wouldn't be any charges against the couple who was defending their, their, their property against these, uh, these, uh, unpeaceful protesters, uh, Kim Gardner, she says she's going to research, uh, charging them. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It really, really disheartens me. Uh, you know, when somebody comes to threaten you on your own property, you should be able to defend yourself. Absolutely. And, and for those who have been living under a rock, what Keith is talking about is uh, these protesters were going to, they were trying to find the mayor's house. Is that what it was? Yes. And it's in this posh neighborhood, gated private community. And the gates were closed. This mob, I'm going to call them, they're not protesters, it's a mob knock the gate down and it's supposed to be like a security gate too apparently there were no security guards there they they go in knock the gate down and commits to tromp through this subdivision this private gated you know, neighborhood and you know ranting and raving and hollering and hooting uh, on their way to the mayor's house uh where and this couple aren't they don't they own a law firm i believe Yes, they do, and they're actually representing a uh, a, a, a gentleman who's uh, got a lawsuit against the police for uh, excessive force. Oh, well, there you go. You know, according to uh, where is this at? Missouri? Yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, in St. Louis, you know, they come out with their. He's got an AR-15 or an M16. I don't know what kind of rifle he's got uh, exactly, but he comes out with a rifle, and she comes out with a little. It looks like a freaking 380. I don't know, <laughs> pea shooter, and she's she's kind of holding it like uh, uh, like she would her 
her oven mittens or something. I don't know. It was <laughs> these guys aren't. I mean, it's clear they're not demonstrating you know good, effective, safe firearms handling. They haven't been trained. Right. That, that we can all agree on. I mean, it's the firearms yeah. handling was was not was not good. But what happens Clear when people day. get really scared? They get when people get scared. You know, bad things happen. Yeah. And this, you could tell they were they were legitimately scared. Yeah, and so what they were doing is they were having a, a lunch or something out with their family out in their backyard, and then I guess they heard all this noise and this commotion of this mob storming through their subdivision, uh, and of course they don't know what's going on. I mean, how are they supposed to know that these people are going to the the mayor's house and not, you know, they have no intentions of of harming them or hurting them? They don't. So, you know, they grab their firearms and they go out on their front porch and they're like, hey, we're, you know, demonstrating we're not going to have any nonsense go on here. Well, a couple of the, uh, I guess, protesters started antagonizing them uh, even more. Uh, and I and I read somewhere where some of the uh, the mob was they were armed as well. So I don't I read know, that as well. Yeah, so I don't know how accurate yeah, that is. That. Uh, so, but according to and from what I've read, and I don't know uh, Missouri law, but they were within their rights to do what they did because Missouri has stand your ground law, and they have the uh, the was it the castle uh, castle doctrine the castle doctrine. But like you said the leftists have gotten attorneys and they're investigating whether these two, this couple broke any laws and they're going to try to bring them up. And uh, you would think with them being lawyers that they would know, you know, what their, their rights and how the laws work there. So. Right. When well, you get the, the prosecutor for, you know, the, 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 the county, you know, telling them yeah. that they're going to re- research charges. Well, you, you know, that that's again, another bit of grandstanding for, uh, cause you can't resist these people. You got to just comply if they're going to come burn down your house or, you know, beat you to death. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, just ridiculous. Based on the couple's account, police labeled the incident, uh, a case of trespassing and assault by intimidation. According to the incident summary, no other police reports were filed that night. A department spokesman told Fox News. Mark McCloskey told a news reporter that a mob rushed toward the home as the family was having dinner and put us in fear of our lives. This is all private property. There are no public sidewalks or public streets. We were told that we would be killed, our home burned, and our dog killed. We were all alone facing an angry mob. So that's a quote from the McCluskeys or McClowskies. I don't know. I don't know how you say that name. But here's here's another thing that uh, disheartens me is to see the gun community battling within over this. You know, you get the armchair commandos going in and critiquing their firearms handling and, you know, the situation on how they would have done it if it was them and, uh, you know, all this bullshit. But, I mean, until it fucking happens to you you don't know what you're going to do or how you're going to react obviously if you've got training you're going to you're going to handle your firearms better than these people uh and i'm sure that there are probably a blue dozen uh trainers that have reached out to them and offered free training at this point (laughs) yeah well there's also this little little fact factoid uh when they were confronted the uh by this couple uh, I think those protesters looked at the gun handling and looked at the seriousness of uh, what they were doing and decided we better move along. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe because it was so panicked and looked so bad that they took them serious, that they, they probably would get shot if they entered that property and tried to assault them. So they moved yeah. on. So, uh, you know, you could, you could, we can obviously, you know, second guess their weapons handling, but under stress things happen. And let's, let's look at this way. No one got hurt. And at the end it was effective. It was, uh, you know, the, I think they, they definitely got their point across, uh, but again, in in the in the eyes of the public, this is not going to go well. <laughs> the way the media is going to, you know, they are they already oh, are yeah. eating this up and, and portraying it. I mean, you see the pictures of these two posted with their guns and the you know the poor handling and you know all that. Then it just in the in the end, it really does look bad on the the two A community. But I'm I'm behind these two, you know, for the most part. Yeah, I agree. And uh, until more news comes know, they, out about it, right? And but they won't cover the uh, you know a lot of these stations won't cover the fact that in the Seattle chop zone, people are getting murdered every day, rapes and beatings. Uh, they, they oh, no, another peaceful area with no police. It, it, well, there you go. And we talked about this last episode. It was Chaz then, and it's since changed to what is it? Chop? 
<laughs> chop. Yeah, chud. I, I call it the chud. Capitol Hill Occupied Protest Zone is what they're calling it now. But there's good news in that, I guess. Uh, Seattle finally moved in, and they cleared out the demonstrators, is, is what I'm hearing here. And this is on ABC or NBC News. Seattle police officers under orders from Mayor Jenny Durkin cleared demonstrators out of Capitol Hill Occupied Protest Zone. Chop. <laughs> on Wednesday, just two to, two days after, as Keith just stated, one person was killed and a 14-year-old boy was injured in a shooting. Police officers on bikes and on foot began dispersing the crowd at about 5 a.m. Uh, it says, I support yeah. peaceful demonstrations, Black Lives Matter, and I too want to help propel this movement forward toward meaningful exchange in our community and meaningful change in our community. But enough is enough. Our job is to protect and serve the community. So if you guys want to read more about that, you can. But it looks like they're getting a grip on this uh, occupied zone there in Seattle and uh, getting them out of there. So what are your thoughts on that, Keith? Uh, it should have never happened. It should have never allowed to be to happen. Uh, this is the U.S. and there's private businesses and residents in that area. And they were deprived of services. They were abused. Things were stolen. You know, police station was given up and then it was occupied and burned. I mean, just ridiculous uh, on yeah. every level. Uh, Seattle should be ashamed of themselves. The, 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 whoever gave the order to abandon that substation should be a, should be a, a, a ashamed of themselves because it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And, and look, the, the result is the same in the end anyway. I mean, I'm looking at an article, at least 31 arrested. So they just kind of delayed the inevitable by letting these people do what they did. Well, they delayed the inevitable, but they also um, allowed a person to be killed and a 14-year-old to almost be killed. Yeah. Uh, that we know of. There's probably others that they're not even reporting. But uh, for, for our listeners who aren't familiar with Keith Garcia, Keith uh, is a 20-year veteran from the uh, 20, California yeah, police. 20, 27 years now. Man. I'm getting toward, wow. towards the end of it. Don't Ooh. let this gray hair fool you. <laughs> well, they don't call you the silver fox for nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it just it just it was a really ridiculous thing i was surprised to see that kind of activity on the on the west coast i, I thought that might be something you'd see east coast uh you know some of these uh really uh, left-leaning you mm -hmm. know city and state go governments but I, I was pretty shocked to see that happen up in seattle yeah yeah me too it's a shame, but uh, it did happen. Uh, I, th I think a lot of the things that are happening now are social experiments. You know, I think I think some of the officials are letting stuff happen just to see what happens, and it's it's usually what the predicted outcome is going to be, which is not good. Right, and I, I think we all need to to realize that, that a lot of this is happening because it's an election year. That is true. Yep. They right, it's like they almost have to justify the imagery so that they can do their job. So, you know, I, I'm just sick of all the, the protesting and the riots and, you know, the violence that these people are doing. I'm not, I'm not going to go down that road. But anyway, it's, it's nonstop. And there's another incident that happened in Provo, Utah, where a mob of demonstrators, protesters, whatever they're calling themselves now, um, uh, we're in the streets, you know, stopping traffic, preventing people from getting to where they needed to go from point A to point B in their vehicles. Uh, and a, a, a passenger, not a passenger, but the driver of a, tr of a SUV was shot by one of the protesters. And as of this reporting, the police have arrested two people in connection with the shooting. Uh, a dude, a 33-year-old dude, I'm not going to say their names, uh, and a 27-year-old chick. They were taken into custody of Utah County Jail, uh, reported on Twitter. He was accused of attempted aggravated murder, aggravated assault, rioting, and threatening the use of a weapon in a fight. So uh, the, there's been a lot of posts on social media showing the shooting and you know everything that was going down there. And uh, is completely uncalled for. Absolutely, and uh, you know, uh, CNN will call that a peaceful protest. A pe yeah, it's peaceful. They were peacefully protesting. <laughs> well, just, uh, I want to remind all the listeners. You know, Utah is a great concealed carry state, so you really need to take responsibility for your own protection. Yeah, and 
you know, back to the, the couple uh, in that gated community, they're calling that a, a peaceful protest as well. That was the furthest thing from a peaceful protest. But the media is still spinning it as a peaceful protest. Right. And you can hear in the background when they're getting threatened and uh, they're going to kill them and kill their dog and burn down their house. That doesn't sound particularly peaceful to me. Well, when they when they knock down your gate, it's the peace. The peacefulness is over right there. They've illegally entered. They have destroyed public property or private property. Uh, and then they were trespassing. So it's ridiculous. All Agreed. right. So lots of jack wagons there. And I'm sure that there are many more that you guys are saying, what about this person? What about this thing? Well, send them in to me, talkinglet at gmail.com, because I have no way of, of reading and knowing about everything that's going on. So talkinglet at gmail.com, send me your jack wagon nominations, and we'll make sure that we read them on the air here and give you credit. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the backcountry or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. kel 22 caliber P-17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time. On the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P-17. It's more bang for less buck. So let's let's bring some uh, some positiveness to this show now. Let's get rid of all this negativeness and let's talk about some heroes, some Lead Head Brigade heroes that deserve a ride on Lead Force One. And uh, I'm going to let Keith go first on this because we're all in agreement on this. Right. So uh, the firearms community lost probably what I consider its biggest patriot uh, and, and, and supporter. Frank DeSoma from uh, PLF USA was tragically killed in a uh, vehicle accident. And it, it's really, you know, it hit me hard. Frank was a, a dear friend and just a brilliant uh, designer, innovator, uh, businessman, and, and just a truly one of the the most real people you're ever going to meet. And he is, he is, will definitely be missed. He would tell you what was on his mind. There's no doubt about that. Well, I got a firsthand account of that at SHOT Show. Um, Keith came by and introduced um, Frank to me and uh, to the guys there at the Buck Knives booth uh, where we were doing the, the podcast. And uh, at first, I mean, it was just, you know, Hey, how you doing? Frank Soma, Marty Holder, you know, kind of thing. But then we got on. I said, hey, won't you guys sit down? Let's do the show. And we got to talking. And, you know, we talked about the new stuff that uh, that they were putting out at the time, the 308, which you're you're using in competition shooting, Keith, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So just over six pounds. Uh, incredible. Uh, Super light. Incredible piece of, of machinery and innovation. It is uh, it is badass. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the things that I like about his, him and his company is that, you know, they were innovators. They were always innovating, trying to make uh, firearms better, uh, more useful, more, uh, you know, just the next level kind of stuff. And that 308 really kind of hit the, the mark for me. But uh, then we got to talking a little bit more, as we always do. We go down the rabbit hole. And, you know, Frank's personality, he started loosening up a little bit. <laughs> so he got, he got comfortable with us. Uh, and then he just started letting us know about, uh, you know, his thoughts on these taxes and uh, excise taxes that they put on the firearms industry. And, um, you know, that he was happy to do it and that, you know, he's going to a good cause. We were talking about conservation, you know, and that's what got us started on it. And uh, he was very passionate about it. And like you said, man, he didn't pull any punches. He said exactly what he thought. And I was like, man. I like this guy. <laughs> hey, David, it, it, it was great. We're sitting there, and 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 Frank, uh, you know, launches into uh, you know a great, uh, for lack of a better term, rant. And I, I see Marty kind of look up; his eyes got big, and then he smiled. 
And he's like, oh, yeah, this, this is going to be good. And it was. It was always good. When, when Frank would start, it was it was just – it was always a classic. And I always yeah. learned stuff, too. That was the best part. Oh, yeah. I, I just – yeah. I want all the listeners to know it's not something that he would just turn on for, for media or for the show. I mean, I've been at dinners with him where he would lecture the, the wait staff and try to educate them. I mean, it was just something he had passion for and wanted to talk about. Yeah. So but my, my, my favorite story about Frank. So when I first got associated with the company, uh, he invited me down to the shop to, to take a tour. And I brought a, a buddy of mine who's uh, in the Marine Corps, uh, retired now, but he, at the time he was uh, still reserve. And uh, we went in. It was just the three of us. And, uh, you know, we, we were there to look at guns. But the first uh, 30 minutes was a civics lesson. <laughs> and how great this country is. And, I, and I'm literally, I'm, by, by the end of 30 minutes, I've learned a ton and I'm sweating because my brain's hurting. I'm trying to, trying to you know, keep up with Frank and, and everything he's telling me. And then we start talking about the guns and just all these amazing innovations. And as we walk out that day, my buddy turned to me and he goes, I wish Frank was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's just such a, you know, a lovable guy who just, you know, loves this country and it was infectious. So, you know, from a Marine to hear that from a, a guy who designs and builds the, some of the coolest guns ever. It was just, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And I had every intention of getting him on to get his take on our current uh, situation in our society. And uh, I know that would have been a great show. Um, uh, Truly missed that uh, I didn't have the opportunity to have him back on again. But if you guys want to go back and hear that interview that we did with him at SHOT Show, it's on episode 338. And um, we've got some other ones in there too. But uh, just listen through that, and then we've got the Frank interview there with Keith and Frank. And it's, like I said, it's a doozy, man. You're definitely going to love it. So, yeah, very worthy of Lead Force One. Uh, We're just going to let him pilot it. You know, he's going to be the pilot of Lead Force One. <laughs> he's just going to take over Lead Force One there. Uh, I can't really top that, you know, as far as news, you know, what I've heard in the news lately. It's just all been this this negative stuff. So, have you guys got anybody else you think is very deserving of a ride on the Lead Force One? Uh, I'd leave it with Frank. I think that's a good yeah, one. You know what? I think the president, uh, President Donald Trump, would be in the co-pilot seat right now because he seems to be the only one standing up for us. That's true. I mean, he's he's out there standing up against these uh, leftists, and I mean, he's taking it on the chin left and right. Anybody else probably would have, you know, caved from a heart attack or something by now. I mean, this man's inhuman. He thrives on. <laughs> You know, on all this uh, personal attacks on him and his family and everything, but he just he just seems to get stronger and stronger, and it just stokes his fire. I agree. He's inhuman. He's an alien. And didn't isn't that something? Here's my theory on all this. Here's my theory on the COVID and these these riots and everything. Like prior to this, wasn't there a government announcement that aliens that they acknowledge that aliens exist or UFOs exist? U- UFOs. Yep. I think this is a cover up for that. <laughs> That's no, I think I think more likely it's a distraction from these indictments that are coming down. Yeah, from, political uh, like you said, Department uh, of Justice. Election year, yeah. Coming down the pike. Who's All right. the, the the Hillary indictments? Uh Hillary Gate, Obama Gate, you know, the, the past administration and all their uh interesting uh, uses of uh, government entities to spy on and uh, kind of, you know, more or less try and have a coup of our current administration. Uh, it's, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think Bill Barr is uh, actually doing some good work and uh, the investigator, the, the, the gentleman from Connecticut who's uh, doing heading up that investigation, uh, I think we'll see some, uh, some interesting stuff come out of that. I'm hopeful that people will held account for some of the crazy stuff they've done. Yeah. That'd be great. I mean, that's always the hope. Founded in 2012, IWIUS is the USA based subsidiary of Israel Weapon Industries Limited of Ramat Hasharon, Israel. The IWIUS line of products includes the Tavor X95, the Uzi Pro pistol and SMG, the Galil Ace line of firearms, and the belt fed Negev line of light machine guns. IWI's mission is to bring the highest quality firearms 
with real world proven reliability to the U.S. commercial and law enforcement market. IWI US are proud sponsors of the Talking Lead AK Corner and the Lead Head Brigade. Check us out at www.iwi.us and on social media under IWI US. All right, let's uh, let's move on. We got we got some great announcements from Keith that we want to make right now. Like I said, Keith's uh, been making some some videos. He's he's been on the other side of the camera these days, and it's with Pantio Productions. Uh, I know a lot of our lead heads uh, are are members of that and watch those videos and subscribe to that. Uh, I actually got to do uh, a little bit of it over the last week, and those videos are very high quality. Good, good subjects, good topics uh, that they put out. And I watched one on precision rifles. But I'm looking forward to yours that are coming out. So let's talk about the two videos that you've got coming out, Keith. Okay, so the concept behind the, the first one that I filmed uh, was how to train for three gun. And, and the reason we went and did it, I, I flew to South Carolina in March because that was, you know, the big kickoff of this whole COVID shelter in place stuff. And I thought, you know, this would be a good time to give somebody some content that they could use at home in dry fire. I mean, it's pretty well accepted that dry fire is going to help you get mm -hmm. better. Uh, I know it really helped me. And over the years, what I've done is I've kind of broken down my training into three uh, facets, shooting, weapon manipulation, and transition. So the shooting part, I mean, when the gun's up on target and you're actually pulling the trigger and what you need to, you know, for acceptable sight picture for the target size and distance, that's something you've got to do out on the range. But literally everything else you can do at home. And that's what I've been doing. Because when I went from being a mediocre shooter to, to being a you know contender and winning national championships, uh, it was, you know, I had two jobs. I had two small kids. And I could, if I could get to the range one day a week, I was lucky. It was either to train or go shoot a match. And that really isn't a ton of time. If you're, if you're, you know, just shooting live fire at the range one day a week, you're really not going to get much better. But if you dry fire and you manipulate the weapons and you have that familiarity, you, know, you get in there and you really start going through the, the, the finer points of how you get those weapons into a proper shooting stance, into a proper grip, how you manipulate them, how you get them, get them loaded, keep them loaded, how you fix malfunctions, and then how you transition to the other guns. And that's the whole weapon manipulation aspect of it, as well as the, the transition between the guns. And you can do that at home. And I do it. It takes me about 10 minutes. I think it would take a new person maybe 15 or 20 minutes if, when they're first started. Mm -hmm. But what, in the tape, what we do is we go through uh, – Six, six different uh, setups for the guns. And in the first one, you know, you're, again, this is dry fire, but you're, you're imagining the guns are loaded and you're getting them up and you're shooting grip, you're transitioning, you're, 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 you're getting through that. And then the next one, that you're, they're the empty chamber because these are all starts. These are all challenges that we face at matches and people have to get their guns loaded. And then the next one's loaded with a reload. Then we do loaded with a emergency reload or, you know, slide lock or bolt lock reload. Then we go into unloaded starts with the ammo coming from your belt and unloaded starts where the uh, ammo is actually staged on the table and the concept here was hey do this at home and if you get all these if you get two of the three facets of uh, of training done at home you you save a ton of money and time because you're just doing a little bit every night and then when you get to the range you take those same drills and you'll see on the tape i i, I do the drills and dry fire and then i and then i show them in live fire and mm -hmm. i show okay this is how you track if the dry fire is working for you you go out, you shoot them, and and just just so you know, the, the content in this is a three day class that I teach, and it's all going to be in one video, and it's really if you came to the range, it costs you six seven hundred bucks plus travel and hotel and all that to to go to a class. Uh, you're going to get it all in one DVD or one you know online uh, rental one stream. And it's, it's a ton. <laughs> one stream and it's a ton of content. So what what I wanted to do is basically show, and I don't I don't pull any punches. I show everything that I do. And I and I've learned I've you know developed a bunch of techniques over the years. I, I also go through all my gear and I tell people why, how, you know, the, the purpose behind it. Uh, I go through the techniques to tell people, hey, this is some of them. Most of them, it's hey, this is the most fast and efficient way of doing stuff. And that's that's the way I train to do it in the video. And then sometimes it's all, hey, this is the fastest way to do it, but it's unsafe, and you may want to consider doing this instead, so you don't get DQ'd. Because what I what I want to have to happen is people they they have the opportunity since they can't a lot of people can't get the range right now. They're they're you know they're going to try and you know do some dry fire at home, but you know matches a lot of them are canceled. People are still stuck at home. This gives them something to do to train. 
And uh, once you, if you do this, uh, you know, you have to add in two aspects of it. You have to go out, if you're going to go shoot a match, is, is get your long range dope. And mm -hmm. then you have to do some shooting on the move. But other than that, you're going to do everything that, uh, that could possibly be done right there in your house. And in, in the other two, two of the three phases, you can knock it out in dry fire. And, and like I said, I think it's pretty well accepted that dry fire is a, a great way to learn the familiarity with the weapon systems. Mm -hmm. And if we add in all of these challenges, I mean, you're going to have 50 different 50 plus different challenges that you're going to face and if you do that any match you go to you're not going to be like because they'll do some weird thing the match director or the stage designers will be like ah we're going to get them this time and they, they throw in some goofy shit and you're like oh man and then, then i see I, I see newer newer shooters standing there going oh my god how am i going to do this and i already have a plan go, okay i know how to do that now let me just figure out how to shoot the stage the most efficient you know what right i want to see the, the I want to see one. Uh, so on Netflix, there's this new show out. It's called the F the floor is lava. <laughs> Have you seen that? The floor is lava. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna really do some uh, fun stuff there, huh? Yeah. A, a stage where you got to jump from uh, rock to rock. And not, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. You can't touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You got to nice. find a way yeah, to cross that. over. Yeah. All that, yeah. That would be hilarious. That would be a new challenge, and with guns, awesome! I love it. But yes, of course, because you got to practice good safe safety, you know, while you're doing that. But yeah, that'll never happen. Correct. That would be uh, that'd be something. So you've been doing this for 16 years or more. Uh, yeah, three gun competitions for 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 about 15 years, and then I was I've been a you know, police officer for about uh, 27, 28 years now, and so I, I you know was. I did that, went to the academy, uh, got on our SWAT team, was a team leader for 10 years, uh, did SWAT competitions, did handgun competitions, uh, got, you know, where I was shooting on a super squad for a few years, uh, became a grandmaster, and then I, I got hooked on three gun. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's three times the fun because you got three guns, right? <laughs> no and, doubt, uh, yeah. And, and just a ton more challenges. And and, and pistol shooting is great, and, there, and there's a lot of pistol shooters, and, and most of them have a, a you know rifle in their safe, and and, and maybe the, you know shotguns kind of the biggest thing that keeps people from from jumping in. Mm -hmm. And you know years ago uh, when we were loading our shells one at a time uh, in the shotgun, there was only about three or four of us who could do it and do it well. And you know that was kind of cool because then you knew you'd be top three or four right. in any match because you're the only guys who could load the shotgun. But then quad loading came in. And we're talking, you know, 2010, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Most people were, were, were converting over. And it's made it so much easier. It, it really is easy. Now to talk about the out. difference between quad loading and the, the old style. So the old style, we, you know, we'd be holding these shells and we'd be feeding them in one at a time, one at a time from the bottom. And you really had to have a lot of dexterity. And if your hands were bigger, you had an advantage. Uh, with quad loading, you're literally holding all four shells. And they're going in, you know, two at a time. You're just pushing with your whole hand. It's it's much easier. You're using a lot more muscle. You don't have to use your thumb only basically to push it in. You're using your whole forehand and arm. And right. some people are getting the shoulder into it. And it's it makes it a uh, hundred percent easier and more efficient. It's, it's you know, not it's not now. anything that the manufacturers did to change the gun. It's just a technique of loading that someone brilliant came up with and like, hey. Correct. Yeah, somebody brilliant came up with it, and that's in dispute. Uh, I had nothing to do with it. In fact, I was mad that it happened because I could load the shotgun the other way. And I and, and I had to I had to switch over. There's a couple of us who were holding out, a couple of the top guys at the time, me, Taryn Butler, Daniel Horner. We're like, ah, we don't need that. We're still we're still the best at this. Right. And then and then I remember the day I knew I had to change. I was uh, in a match. I was shooting with the, with Daniel when he was with the AMU. And there was we were in Vegas and there was this rickety like rope bridge. And uh, he he had switched over to quad loading. And, floor is you know, lava it, right and so he goes across this bridge and, and well it's rickety and bouncing up and down it loads like 12 rounds in three seconds and and gets to the other end and i just my jaw dropped i'm like oh so now i gotta go home in the off season and figure this out Damn it, man. It, 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 yeah right it worked it worked out and I, i'm pretty darn efficient at it now i've got a bunch of of uh, good tips in the video on how to do it uh, yeah, you are more than support. proficient at it. You, I would say that you are an expert at it, definitely. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. And it, so the shotgun is is a, you know one of the three phases, and you have to be proficient in all three phases. And we went through that everything in the video. I was there for two days filming, you know, eight ten hours a day, and uh, I saw some. I've seen the rough cuts, and, and it looks good, and uh, it should be out. And this is going to air on July fourth. Is that correct? Yeah, this is coming out the third actually. 
Oh, the third. Okay, Friday. so on July 4th is the tentative release day for the, the three-gun video. And right now, I think there's it's a 20 or 30% off uh, Pantio.com. They're going to have a 4th of July special. So if you want to do some dry firing at home, really learn uh, the ins and outs uh, of, of weapon manipulation and transition between the guns. It's stuff that people kind of overlook. And they and they lose a lot of time in a match. And the whole point, I mean, you're you're, you're basically you're, you're fighting the clock. You want to get done as fast as possible. So if you're yeah. fast and efficient in everything you do, you'll be better off. And you can dry fire those drills at home. Then you take them to the range. It's a quick, easy setup. You shoot them at the range and you chart your performance. And then you add in some long range shooting. You add in some shooting on the move. And now you're ready to go to a match. And you're not going to be intimidated by anything there because you you practice it all. And you have this familiarity with it, you know, for lack of a better term, this muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And you have a plan and you don't need to to really go and think about, hey, the, every step of uh, what you're going to do because you've been doing it. And that to me is a big relief when you get there and you can kind of operate uh, at more of a subconscious level when you're moving through stages. And really the only time you need to, to, to have conscious thought put in there is if you start missing or if your gun malfunctions. And, but you're, otherwise, you're kinda, you, you kind of run at a little bit different level and you're much more fast and efficient if you don't have to think about every single thing you do. Now, this video is good for the beginner, but it's also good, you know, it's excellent information and, and techniques for you know, somebody who's been doing three gun for a while too, right? Yeah. It, to me, this, I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't have any secrets. I go through match mental management and I go through everything that I do to prepare, um, the, from the, from the, you know, showing the shooting part to doing all the dry fire stuff. And there's, there's no secret. So if, you know, if you've been doing it for 10 years or you've been doing it for 10 days, this will, there, there's something in there that's going to help you get better. Um, because I, you know, I put everything I could into it. Again, it's a three-day class uh, that you're going to get in, you know, three hours of, uh, of online streaming. Right. And you get to watch it at your own pace too. And you can rewind Absolutely. and rewatch and you know do all that. So all the benefits of online streaming that you're going to get from that, that instructional video from Keith there. Now, uh, how do they they just go and sign up on the website there to to do this? How does that work? Correct. Pantheo.com. There's a, there's the streaming service portion of it and you can do a subscription. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's all very reasonable. Like I say, it's going to be a sale on July 4th. So mm -hmm. there's a code right there on the website. Check it out. There's, there will be DVDs available there. There, the cut will be sent to, uh, the finished product is going to be sent to a, a DVD copier. And, uh, those, will, those will become available. Uh, not sure the, the price on that one yet, but, uh, it's all pretty darn reasonable. Uh, and there's a ton of content on, on Pantheo that, that, you know what, I've watched it, rewatched it. There's competition stuff. There's a ton of tactical stuff. And the, the cool part is you've got a bunch of instructors who are like world famous guys who, who some of them have passed on, uh, but you can still watch the legacy of what they brought mm -hmm. to the 2A community and the training. Uh, guys like Louis Arbuck and Pat Rogers, these guys were icons and they were, they were, they were great instructors and great guys. And they, they really brought a lot to the table. So there's all this, uh, this content on there that you can access. And it's, I think it's a great deal. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so the website again is P A N T E A O.com. And then you're going to go look for Keith's video. It's uh, make ready with Keith Garcia, how to train for three gun. And there's a trailer there now that you can watch. Uh, and then, like you said, the fourth, as you're hearing this be the next day, uh, you'll be able to go and watch that full video and sign up for that. Now, in addition to that, you've got another one coming out on this, um, uh, on Pantio as well. Let's, let's talk about right. that one. So, so for the last 10 years, I've been working on a qualification course, a, a training course. It's really, it takes about probably two or three hours to get somebody through it to safely. But what I do is I go through what I call a tactical handgun challenge. And I've been working on what, I, what I've been referring to for years as the five second standards. Cause there's always people asking me, well, what's a good, you know, what's a good draw time. What's what, you know, what, 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 what does it take to, to you to reload? And I'm like, well, with the cop stuff, I go through the whole thing. And, I, and this is, I'm wearing a Spartan holster and mag pouches, basically the same stuff that I, I use at work. And, um, it, it, to me, it really, uh, it's a challenge. And, and what I've done is I've, tried to blend in kind of like master class shooting with master class manipulation and weapon handling. And, and I've been given this, this, you know, uh, in-person class, uh, and I've been 
fine tuning this thing for years and literally no one their first time through has done decent on it. It's, mm-hmm. it's a humbling course of fire. Um, you have to do, you have to shoot with both hands. You have to shoot with a strong hand and your support hand. You have to do malfunction clearances. You have to keep that gun running from, you know, the slide lock reloads. You, you've got to do in like, for instance, uh, you know, how many people can actually, uh, do a malfunction clearance with, uh, their support hand only of a double feed in under five seconds. So I'm going to show you how to do you that. You can. I'm going to take you through it. Yeah, well, and everybody else can too if you if you have the right gear. What I've said, this is a challenge of your your shooting ability, your weapon manipulation, as well as your gear. Because a lot of gear just isn't set up right. It, it, the magazines can't be manipulated well. If the slide doesn't lock back, you know, when, when, the, when the magazine's empty, it becomes a real issue. And it'll slow you down. And people you know, start figuring out, hey, this, okay, I need to change this. I need to change that. And uh, it, to make yourself, anybody who carries a gun that for their protection or somebody else's protection, whether you're in law enforcement or you're concealed carry or you're, you know, security guard, uh, you owe it to yourself to be the best you can be. And it's like I said, I, after 27 years and, and working hard trying to, uh, a good comprehensive training plan uh, to prepare people for all the challenges you face. And I can tell you from the, from the, the police officer perspective, uh, the better trained you are, the more confidence you have. And actually, in the end, the less force you use because people see that you're prepared. And it's the same thing with concealed carry. If, if you look in somebody's eyes, if you see the way they move, the way they carry themselves, they're not scared, the tone of their voice, all of that confidence comes out and you're actually less likely to have to use force right. if you're prepared to do it. If you're adequately prepared to do it or if you're you know, really uh, you know, at the master class level. So uh, I, I was happy they brought out some uh, cameras that they were going to use uh, on a video shoot and they were actually cinema quality cameras for this shoot. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I haven't seen the rough cut of that yet, but, uh, you know, I told him, to, I, t- I told him to try and make me look good. Cause that stuff, you know, you can see inside people's pores and, oh, hell. Thought, well, you know, I better, better watch out there, but you're you know, a California boy. Back. You got naturally pull, beautiful pull, skin, pull, pull back a little bit. It ain't getting too close. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think it's going to go great. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed it and, and I got, le- you know, not say got lucky, but. I rarely score a hundred points on this thing because it's very, very challenging. And I tell yeah. people, you know, it started at five yards and once you can get above 90, move back to 10. And uh, so I, I've, I've actually got, you know, like a, a perfect score at 15 and I'm trying to do it at 20. But that day I, I did the, the basic class and I, I showed everybody the drill at five yards and I was fortunate enough to, 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 uh, to, 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 <laughs> to shoot a hundred percent, which, well, yeah, cause I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's a, it's tough and everything has to be just right. And, yeah, you know, when you're doing these video shoots, you're out there for hours talking about gear, getting the cameras right, the sound guy. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the wind's blowing. Oh, there's a plane overhead. Stop. And then it's like, okay, hey, shoot to 100% of your ability and don't mess up. Go. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, and then shit. once in a while, it, it, it all comes together. And, and I was I was very happy, very fortunate that it, it worked out. Uh, and I think it's going to be really cool. And like I said, anybody who, who really wants to, to see where you're at, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you don't have to be the best shooter in the world to, mm-hmm. to, to view the tape, but you could improve and be better. And this at is for, for anyone, better at whether they're civilian shooter, competition shooter, uh, law enforcement, military. So this is good for everyone. Correct. The, the way I, I the way I, I look at it, if you carry a gun to protect yourself or somebody else, you owe it to them and yourself to be the best you can be. So why not develop the confidence in in your weapon handling skills and your shooting skills to be prepared for any situation? That's gonna, and it'll actually help you avoid situations. To be honest with you. Yeah, I think we should send this to the. Um the McCluskeys, McCluskeys, McCluskeys. <laughs> We're definitely going to work on her uh, balance, dance, and growth. Right. <laughs> they definitely could benefit from this. Very good. Um, now, I've got just some some three-gun in general questions. You know, I've been beating around the bush for years now to, to go do a competition, and I just, for whatever reason, I've been reluctant, and I haven't done it. What advice would you give someone like myself who's, you know, really wanted to get into it, but just for whatever reason, you know, excuse after excuse, haven't gone out and do it and done it? Here's the thing. Uh, Three gun, the three gunners, there's so much going on at three gun matches that people tend to be a lot more welcoming and, uh, you know, inviting and helpful. Uh, If you go to a, a, a pistol match, I think everybody's kind of wrapped up in their own bubble and, 
not a lot of people are going to, you know, just step up and say, hey, let me help you out. Uh, three gun is totally different. And, and I've seen this at the highest levels. I mean, I'm shooting with the super squad at the national championship and we're sharing stage plans. And you don't see that in the super squad for, for the pistol matches, at least in my experience. Right. So uh, it's very inviting. Uh, and everybody knows there's just you've got to be you got to deal with so many things that people want to help each other. And I've seen people loan people guns who've had you know problems, uh, you know, uh, just do all kinds of stuff, your gear. Oh, hey, I need some ammo. And, and they just go to their bag and grab it. And, and that's one thing I really like about the three gun community. So don't be intimidated by it. Um, a lot of clubs, what they'll do is before you come shoot a match, they'll want you to be my club. Personally, they'll 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 come out and say, OK, we want you to do a half day class so we can show you all the safety stuff. Because that's really the most important part. You got to go through it safe. And when you're dealing with three guns and, uh, you know, the, the aspect of, hey, you, can, you know, how to abandon them and how to move around them and, and, and how to, you know, recognize where the 180 is, uh, it, it gets pretty complicated. So I, w- I would say, hey, go out to uh, like an intro class or just go out with somebody who's experienced who can guide you through it. Mm-hmm. And I'd be happy to do it. You know, you, you, you come into a match where I'm at and I'll, I'll just I'll coach you through every stage. You can even use my guns. Oh, well, look at there. I, how can I turn that down? Shit. Right? <laughs> now I have no excuses. <laughs> so speaking of matches, are those are our matches kicking back up now across the, the country? Yes, they are. Um, luckily, you know, right before COVID really, you know, started shutting things down, we all went to, to Phoenix and we shot the uh, Mystery Mountain match because we didn't know if we'd shoot another match this year. And that was back in March. And uh, they had already put the match on the ground, so they weren't going to uh, cancel it, <laughs> which I totally understand. I mean, you've got a huge outlay of funds there and yeah. you know, the prize table, and everybody's already traveled. So they had to socially distance the, from each other and shoot the match, which was, you know, kind of funny because it, it, you know, I, I'm sure there was no outbreak from, from us getting together there. No. So we did that. The gunpowder will fun. kill any COVID anyway, you know. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're outside in Arizona, right? So, you know, it's, it's not flying through the air. And then uh, just, you know, we had about two months off where literally nothing was going on. And now in the end of June, uh, we, we started back up, uh, took a couple of trips to uh, to Florida to shoot the uh, USPSA three-gun uh, or multi-gun nationals, as well as the, the pistol caliber carbine nationals uh, this past week. And uh, now we're, uh, we've got uh, matches kind of popping back up. And, uh, That's you know, good. Of course. I'm glad to hear that. Of course, that. we've got the, you know, some, of the, some of the panics uh, you know, in the media and stuff. Oh, we got to shut down again. But I, I, think the, I think a lot of these matches are just going to continue. The next big one for me is going to be in Wyoming uh, at the end of uh, – first weekend in August. So first I've got some training August. to do between now and – yeah. So you're going you're gonna to do some of those dry firing drills. Man, as soon as we hang up, I'm gonna get back to it. You were doing it when I first, when we first rang in. You were doing drills. That was. <laughs> well, I got I got a new gun from Akai Custom Guns, and it's just uh, this uh, this 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 pretty thing right here. Oh uh, yeah, you're gonna have to send uh, me a picture like, so I can show the lead yeah. heads that. That's beautiful. So so yeah, I was I was I was fondling it. You know, so <laughs> not really training, just just kind of loving on it because it was it's it's a really nice just, piece. Just pampering and, it a little uh, bit, yeah. Yeah, you know, totally. Yeah, just just talking to it, telling how we what we're gonna do. You know, you know. Did you ever go to fun. to Rock Castle? Did you ever shoot any matches at Rock Castle there in Kentucky? Absolutely, I've shot probably half a dozen times there over the yeah. years. You know, it's no longer in existence, right? Yeah, I was very disappointed to hear that. I but, was uh, too, man. Yeah. It was just like one of the bombs that was dropped on me. It's like. Oh. Nick and uh, Nate Noble, two just quality guys who, uh, you know, tried their best. And uh, they put on some great matches. We all yeah. had a lot of good memories from that place. Um, just but, a beautiful you know place what? to go and visit. I mean, just – but on top of that, then they did three-gun competitions and, you know, other other types of, of shooting competitions there. And you could shoot in a cave, for God's sake. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, well, it's really cool when you, until you get in there and start shooting live ammo, and you're like, "Wow, this, there, there is a lot of powder in these shells." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a good ventilation. Mask. Yeah, the ventilation wasn't that great, but it was still. I mean, the experience was cool to go in there and do the, you know, the low light shooting and the the night vision shooting. It was it was kind of cool. Oh yeah, and there's Thunder Valley too. Uh, we oh, do the long range yeah. stuff. It was, you know, the wind was always, I thought I was in Texas, you know, because Texas is known for just the crappiest conditions to shoot long range and, uh, or most challenging, I should say. I'd love Texas, but it is very challenging. 
and it always seemed like, you know, when my competition was shooting, there's no wind. And when I get there, it's 25 miles an hour, but it's going to 40 and come back down. Uh, but Thunder Valley was the same kind of thing. You'd get some really interesting, uh, some wind and you had to, had to read that. And then because it was all green, you really wouldn't, uh, you know, some of these places you can, when you, when you miss, you see the impact in the yeah. and you see, and you see wind direction and, and velocity and you can, there's make no splash out there. Yeah. No. And that, that makes it even harder. So yeah, that place is going to be missed. And uh, those guys, uh, you know, hopefully they, they, they find somewhere else. And, and, and I hope so. You the sad they, part about that is that they, they divided that land up and they, they chopped it up and sold it. So nobody would be able to go back in and, you know, bring it back, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, that's uh that is unfortunate. I'm, I I was sorry to hear that. Yeah. But I am glad um, to hear that the the competitions are starting back up, uh getting revved back up. Um now, I know you're into the 3 gun. Have you ever thought about doing uh an AK47? Uh I, I yeah, you know, it's an interesting system. And honestly, if I if I had one, I would go shoot some of these AK matches cuz they actually look really cool. They make them do kind of Kind of crazy stuff. I, I just yeah. honestly, I don't own one. And okay. If I had one, you know, I'd, I'd go shoot Red October and all these other. That's ones. what I was gonna say. Yeah. You know, the Red October, the um, uh, there's one in Texas. What is it called? Kalash Bash or something like that. And you know, there's exactly there's more and more right. popping and up. It, yeah, I get jealous. I get jealous when I see that stuff. I just I don't own one, and uh, you know, uh, if, if I had one, I'd definitely do it because I, I love competition period i mean i love shooting any any you know when i, when I train with my buddies every every day is a uh, is a competition at the range so yeah that's oh that's pretty so i'm showing you wow, one this is from occam defense solutions it's the ods 1775 and these things are amazing accurate i would say it's accurate to the point of precision that you could do precision shooting with these as well now do you see oh, wow. do you ever see anybody uh, in your three guns that that uses an AK, you know, something other than an AR-15 out of, out of the ordinary? I have seen it at uh, my, my local club, um, guys, you know, coming in and just trying it and seeing mm. if it works. And, you know, up close, um, you know, they're, they're, they're competitive. You can, you can shoot them. Uh, not a problem. Uh, I have wondered about the precision aspect of it, but you're saying these are much better. Yeah, these are much better. This is, uh, can you see that group at 200? Oh, look at you. All right. That'll work. That'll right. work. That's, that's, you know, that's what we need for, uh, for three gun. Cause we're going to shoot, you know, out to six, six fifty. So mm -hmm. the targets are usually pretty generous. So yeah, that would totally do it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, I know a lot of people want to, want to ask you questions and here's what we're going to do. We're going to give them the opportunity to ask you questions. So when okay. I, when I do the show post, uh, lead heads and I do it on Facebook. I do it on Instagram. Go there and post your questions for, for Keith. If you've got three gun questions, you got gear questions, you got technique questions, uh, you know, whatever it may be, anything. I mean, if you want to ask him about his law enforcement uh, career, you can do that too. Whatever, whatever you want to ask him about. Um, we've got some VIP cards and we've given these out in, in the past 40% off Safari land. And uh, we've got codes that we can give you. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got ten, ten left, and these expire at the end of the year. It looks like, yep, end of the year. We'll go through there, post your questions, and we'll randomly go through, and we'll give ten of you leadheads these forty percent off discount cards. Is that is that cool? It's great. It's heck yeah! It's a great time to. Uh to upgrade your gear, you know, when you're, uh, you know, you're stuck at home and uh, get on the computer, make a wish list and get 40% off of, of, of some of the, you know, the highest quality gear out there Yeah. Uh, for competition, for, for, for carry both on duty, off duty. Uh, that, that's, that's a big discount. And it, uh, Safari Land has, has done a bunch in the last year to uh, really up the game in, in the manufacturing aspect to get those orders fulfilled faster. Yeah. Uh, there was a, there was a transition when they moved the, you know, basically a bulk of their operation from California to Florida a little bit of downtime, but they really, really worked hard and they've got the military contracts they're dealing with. So, uh, you know, there, there was a little lag time there, uh, sometimes a lot. And, uh, I know they felt bad about that, but they've, they've done a lot to, uh, to correct that. So hopefully, you know, if you, if you place an order, if you're looking for new gear, you can get it pretty quickly. Very cool. 
Now, my question, uh, so for a, for a new three-gunner, person getting a three-gun, what's the key gear that I'm, I need to have? And, you know, just the basic essentials that I got to have. Okay, and outside of the guns, obviously you need a, a you know a, a really reliable pistol, rifle, and shotgun. Uh, I think a beginner, a good way, good thing to jump into is your limited vision or tactical vision. So, in, in limited and tactical, uh, the the shotgun basically the same setup, iron sights only, and then in uh, tactical, uh, you can actually add a, a scope, one magnified optic to it. Uh, in limited, you're going to go with a red dot or iron sights, and it's it, it's a good place to start, and it's a great place to to to, to really grow. Uh, but outside of that, what you need uh, in terms of gear for me, the most essential part is a belt with the the, the ELS system from Safari Land. So I've got all these ELS clips. These little clips that will accept you know the, the female parts on your belt, and it, you can clip and 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 you know put on and remove. The different gear pouches so you know you need a, a, a great holster that, that's going to retain your your gun and a qls and you can take that off when you're not using it and then the els system i can i can clip on a, a mag pouch for a rifle uh for a pistol uh, my shotgun uh caddies for a reloading shotgun and if i'm shooting all shotgun stage i just take everything else off i don't need it so it's, I just, it's I just customizable it in you can customize right. it when, to to whatever you're doing once you get, once you get it set up, you know, you don't have to take your belt off between stages. And that's when we all started, you had to you take your belt off and you pull all your stuff off because you're going to go shoot long range. You don't want to have your caddies on there because you're going to lay on them and break them or you're going to be uncomfortable. So you, you know, take everything off and then you put everything back on. It was a pain. And now with the with the ELS system, uh, it's it's the most you know, small and com- compact system that, of all the ones that allow you to kind of change your gear around. Mm-hmm. So it's really effective. And, uh, you know, what it does is, you know, between stages, it, there's a lot going on, right? You need a good stage plan. You need to, you, know, you need help and reset when you're, uh, when, when, you, when other people are shooting, you don't want to worry a lot about your gear. You want to have the belt on, you, know, you, you pull off a couple pouches, you swap them out for other ones. And now you're, you know, you're helping reset and you're getting ready for your stage plan for when you shoot. It just makes you more efficient, uh, in between stages when you know, you're getting ready to shoot and it takes some of the stress off because you know, again, there's a, sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on. Right now, practicing is another, I think, probably issue that some people will uh, run into because a lot of the ranges won't allow you to do that kind of shooting at, you know, at certain ranges across the country. The dry firing, obviously, you know, that's a, a good a good way to to practice. But until you actually, you know, get into the recoil and the actual shooting and 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 running, you know. You gotta you gotta apply all that. What are your suggestions on so, that? So you can dry fire movement as well. So the the, the tape that that uh, we were talking about earlier uh, will take you through all the the dry fire. You kind of you know a little bit a little bit static. Uh, you're moving between the guns, but you can add in movement with all the guns as well as uh, you know loading where you're moving and dry fire, and that's effective as well because you basically you're just looking to keep those sights level, drive them to a target, and then drive them to another target. And you, you're going to see if you. And in fact, I think I think dry firing is better for you because you can actually see where the sights are at, and when you pull the trigger, where the sights really where you want them to be. A lot of times when you're shooting with live ammo, especially new shooters, they get that gun on target, and uh, the sight may look good you know, right before they pull the trigger, but the results on target are, are very different because of their their, their trigger management mm-hmm. and uh, and the and the grip on the gun. So. Dry fire kind of tells your subconscious brain it's okay to have that little bomb in front of your face, and because uh, it's not going off. You know, we all we all have issues with you know basically a little bomb going off in front of your face. You get concussion, you get blast, you get sound. So those things all will add up to in the end. If you all you do is live fire, trust me, your subconscious every time you pull the trigger is just saying, "I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that." And it starts actually getting worse. You may, mm-hmm. and I've done this a ton of time with new shooters. I have them dry fire for about, you know, 30 minutes, just really getting into it, dry firing. And then I say, okay, I'm going to load your gun. And I take the gun, I load it, and I, I just load one round. And I say, okay. Do you tell him you put you one round? <laughs> no, no, no. I you put, don't tell one round, then right, you then don't right tell after I put, a dump, I put a dummy round in. Oh, okay. And they, they, they come up and they fire a perfect shot. That's right, exactly where they've been dry firing. Oh. I say, okay, now fire another one. And you see the most hellacious, you know, uh, 
just trigger jerk anticipation gun comes down you know low left for you know uh because all this stuff is now oh wait a minute all came down to to reality of hey this gun just blew up in front of my face now your subconscious is raising hell with your conscious mind and it it all comes you know it then becomes a problem i say okay now we're gonna you saw what happened there we're gonna dry fire for another half an hour before i let you shoot one round and we do that what happens all those repetitions start building up and your your subconscious muscle memory Right. And it start your subconscious doesn't then think it's a bad thing. It thinks, oh, there's nothing wrong with pulling the trigger. I see the sights. I pull the trigger. Oh, it's no problem. And then, you know, eventually you just you, you don't have to worry about that anticipation issue because your subconscious mind is good with your shooting because you've done so much of it in dry fire that, you know, you, you, you're, it isn't trying to take over. It isn't causing these these big movements of the gun. You're not having this pre-ignition dip right. uh, that's really causing you to miss the target. Very good. So first step, guys, would be if you're looking to get into the the three gun competition shooting is go to Pantio Productions. And this 4th of July, you can get that video uh, from Keith. And what's the name of that video again? It's uh, How to Train for Three Gun. How to Train for Three Gun. Keith Garcia, How to Train for Three Gun right there. Um, And then when's the release of the other one, did you say? Uh, that should be in August, either end of July, first part of August. Okay, so the tactical right handgun we'll challenge, that. and we'll we'll give you guys a heads up when that has been released, so that you can be looking for that one as well. But great information there, man, and uh, you know we've talked about it a little bit on some episodes uh, prior during this COVID time. You know this is the perfect time to get your dry firing in. You know practice your dry firing, but any time is a good time for that. Is is what you're telling us? So. Can't do too much dry fire training. Correct. I mean, I think it's pretty well accepted now that that is the most efficient way. It's free, right? All you're doing is putting your time in. And and when when I break it down in the video, I'm going to show you, hey, it's only going to take you 10, 15 minutes a night. And just have have a a table set up in the garage or wherever with a safe backstop. And, you know, we're not going to use any live ammo and we're going to do it safely. And you can really get through it fast and efficiently and just build up that, that, that muscle memory, for lack of a better term and familiarity with the guns and how to mount them properly. And you'll be way ahead when you get to the range. There you go. Very good. And again, that website is P A N T E A O.com. And that's where you can go. And like Keith said, there's going to be a little discount code that'll pop up on their website that you can use to get a nice big fat independence day discount on, uh, on their services there at Pantio. Does that, once you, once you subscribe there, does it just give you access to all the videos and, and whatnot? And then you can just, uh, put them in your cart and get the ones you want. You, yeah. One of two ways you can either buy specific mm-hmm. ones or you can do a subscription and then have access to everything. To, okay. There you go. I like that. That's a good option. Uh, and then also you guys can go and find Keith on the social meds on Facebook, on Instagram. Are you on YouTube also? Uh, I am, but you know what? I, uh, I need to, <laughs> I had lost the access to that one because I forgot the, uh, I have lost the email and, you know, access to the email and the password. So, uh, I'm in the process of getting that back because I've got to update it. I've got a bunch of videos. I'd like to, you know, training stuff, gotcha. uh, you know, the pieces from this training video to kind of put on there and show people what it's all about. Yeah. And I will, I will work on that in the next week and, and get some stuff up there. Some new content. Got you. What's the Facebook and Instagram where they can get you? Uh, for, for Facebook, it's just Keith Garcia. And then Instagram is Keith Garcia three gun. Very good. And like I said, don't forget, uh, post your questions on the show post that I do for this episode for Keith, and uh, you'll be eligible to receive one of the Safari Land 40% off discount codes that I've got here. I've got 10 of those that I'll hook you lead heads up with. I think I've given out well over 100 of these in the past. Uh, I mean, you've, you've hooked us up uh, in the past with these big time, and they just they go quick. <laughs> I've just been like giving them out. I was like, first come, first serve. Who wants them? But we're going to make you earn these. Happy to do it. And I promise, uh, even if I'm doing a little day drinking, I'll get on there and uh, I'll answer those questions. <laughs> okay. Probably get a, a more honest answer if you've been day drinking a little bit, right? <laughs> it, it, it tends to do that. Yeah. So uh, as soon as we get off here, I'm going to start my uh, 4th of July celebration a little bit earlier. Uh, we're headed to, to Michigan to go visit a buddy up there. Uh, nice. David unfortunately had to drop off, uh, but he had a big announcement too that he wanted to to let you guys know about. Mission First Tactical has come out with some new 
they're like they're tumblers, cups, kind of things. You know, kind of like our 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 three hundredth episode edition talking ladies that we came out with. But they've got them in like smoke grenade uh, shapes. They're pretty cool. So if you go to their website, Mission First Tactical, and go under their uh, drinkware, they've got an M18 Red Smoke Evac um, tumbler. They've got a 155 millimeter M107 Howitzer uh, tumbler. They've got an M7A3 Riot CS <laughs> tumbler. Uh, and then they've got some of their other ones. They've got a Punisher. They've got a DCA. They've got a, uh, I don't know, some kind of logo in there. It's pretty cool. But go to their website, check out those tumblers, and you can use the the discount code works on these also. The Talking Lead discount code. Use the code Leadhead, and you're going to get twenty percent off that drinkware. And then of course, if you want the Talking Lead dump trays or wallets. If you don't uh, want to risk not winning it in this contest, you can go buy those there and uh, get the AK Corner logo that we've got for our Talking Lead AK Corner, the classic Talking Lead logo, and I think they've got a Leadhead Brigade logo uh, set up there for you guys too. So go to missionfirsttactical.com. And then that big giveaway, Keith, that we're doing is starting as you guys are listening to this. July the 3rd kicks off. We're going to run it for about a month, and then we're going to pick the winner July 31st. Keltec CP33 handgun, 22, custom holster from Mission First Tactical. We've got a flashlight from Keltec that they're going to throw in. We've got a, a um, what is it called? 75th anniversary. They don't produce it anymore. What do you call that? Had a production knife. It's a collector's item. There you go, collector's item. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, they're 119. Uh, it's a fixed blade. That's included. Fioki's throwing in a case of 22 ammo, a certificate for that. And of course, guys, all this is you have to be legally eligible. You know, if you can't own a handgun, you're not going to be able to win this. If you know certain ammo or certain magazine sizes aren't allowed in your state then you're not going to be able to to uh to win these either uh and then in addition to that we've got the dump tray and i think that was everything i think i said everything anyway we're going to have all the details we have links up you go to talking let's facebook page i'll make posts on instagram and uh, all these companies will have links as well so plenty of places to to find it to take part and to win i want to see a lot of participation in this uh, the more participation that we have, the better the chance that we'll have another giveaway coming up after this one. So, I can tell you, I'm definitely going to jump in on that. That's a really cool package, and thank you to those sponsors because that's that's good stuff. And I, w- I want everybody to know this is not a fix when I win. Uh, it's all legit. <laughs> it's not a fix when you win, <laughs> and it is. It's completely it's completely random, uh, and you know we do it through that Gleam system, and it's it's completely automated system. The more uh, that you go and take part in liking Facebook pages and Instagram pages and sharing and doing all that, the more entries that you're going to get, your better, you know, better's your chances of winning. So I, I'm uneligible, but you're not. You can, you definitely can enter key. You're because none oh, of these people. Oh, no, I will. None yeah. of these people sponsor you, right? None of those people sponsor no. you. No. Okay, you're no, eligible. No. So we're, we're, I, I'm good. I'm going to jump in on that thing. And I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, when we met it, we met it shot. And you were in the Buck Knives. Uh, booth they, mm-hmm. they you guys showed me a knife uh kind of an underwater uh retro diver you know knife is that one out now are you gonna, are you gonna grab that thing well i got a picture of it up there uh, can you see that is that i can see it yes yeah so it, it is not out yet they're they're putting some final uh finishing touches on it but that uh, we we did make the announcement that that is going into production at Shot Show, you know, with the COVID and all this crap that's happened lately, and I'm sure it's got you know pushed back a little bit. But no, they're still they're still on target to get that out. That is the um, the Buckmaster uh, 2.0, and they've got a couple of different versions that they're going to be coming out with that too. And that's uh, you know that is that is I talked to uh, Chris Brooks recently, and that is still their plan to release that. But yeah, 
Oh, there's a Facebook page you can go to keep up with all the latest and greatest news. It's uh, Buckmaster. I'm glad you mentioned that because I haven't talked about that in a while. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. That was probably the second coolest thing I saw at Shot Show. It yeah. Was, and it was the coolest coolest knife I saw. You know, when when Frank put a, a you know a six pound three weight in my hand, I'm like, wow. I, was supposed <laughs> to, I, I actually got to hold it. That was that was that was a, you know just a kind of a oh no doubt uh, man that real, was a, a, a moving moment for me. Uh, but when you showed me that knife, I was like, wow, this is just really cool. The technology's in it, the design, and the company's obviously an awesome American company. So, oh, yeah. Uh, Idaho I'm, company. I'm, I'm going to have to get one of those. But go, it's a Buckmaster's Knives Discussion Group and the Buckmaster Knives Page Group on Facebook. And you've got just tons and tons of people there showing their their love of the original Buckmaster, posting their pictures, talking about it. Uh, and you know, some talking about the new design that's coming out, but that is, uh, that will be like the premier site when it is released. Cause they'll get like the exclusive talking lead and then we'll get the exclusive on the release and we'll make sure we let all you lead heads know when that 2.0 is coming out. Definitely. I'll be looking forward to that one. Big thanks to all our sponsors, uh, Caltech, go show them some love. Fioki Ammo, Occam Defense Solutions. Modern Spartan Systems for all your gun cleaning and lubrication needs. Uh, go to modernspartansystems.com. TLCP15, that's going to get you 15% off there, and they're going to donate 15% towards Camp Patriot, an awesome uh, outdoor adventure uh, veterans organization that uh, gets our veterans off the couch and out doing hunting and fishing and all kinds of outdoor activities there. And... Uh, yeah, use that code. You get 15% off. Of course, their TVT engine oil additive that I use in the old lead sled. I got 320,000 miles and pushing on that bad boy. And uh, it's due to the TVT engine oil additive. You need to get you some of that, Keith. Good. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds great. Good for anything that runs on oil. Protects it makes it run longer. Is that linked on your site as well? Uh, I, yeah, I have links to those uh, on our website under our sponsors page. Um, I'm forgetting somebody here. Elio Takedown. Uh, you guys, uh, we had Joe on not too long ago. That multiple, that adapter that goes on your AR-15 that allows you to have multiple calibers, multiple barrel links, just with uh, a quick change of the barrel. Uh, and that system's Elio Takedown. 10% off. Use the code LEADHEAD at their website. And they've got some uppers that are pre-installed with that now that you can use that code on as well. So save you a little step on your installation process. And ASP USA, you've probably used some of their products, Keith, some of their batons and cuffs. And yeah, you're familiar yeah, with Yeah, I, I, I carry an ASP uh, off duty as well as on duty. There you go. So if you're mad and you didn't win that Surefire Haley Strategic uh, custom flashlight that we just gave away. ASP has some awesome dual fuel flashlights, programmable flashlights. Uh, I've got three of theirs that I use. I've got in different um, bug out bags and carry in my car and whatnot. They're awesome. You can get 20% off. Use the code LED20 on their website for any of their light products and accessories. You're going to get 20% off. Use that code. Uh, but that's how we get this show to you each and every week, free of charge, no charge to you listeners. We actually pay you to listen to this show. I mean, look at all the crap we give away all the time, rewarding our listeners, Keith. No, it's awesome. You do a great job. And, uh, you know, that's you know, when you call, I'm definitely going to answer the phone every time because uh, you have a quality product. And I, and I listen to it when I'm working out, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm jogging, I've always got the, the earbuds in and I'm, I'm listening to, to old shows. And uh, you just because you get a lot of good info out there. You're talking about products that people may not have heard about. And it's uh, it's a quality uh, thing delivered, like I say, for free. So thank you for free. There you go. Every day, each and every day we do it here. So show our show our sponsors love. Let them know that you're a part of the Leadhead Brigade. Go and buy their products. Hit them up on the social meds. Show them the love. Show our guests the love because they bring you knowledge bombs each and every week. Like Keith set us up with the, the new three-gun, you know, how to train for the three-gun. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to learn. That's going to get me over my hump to start doing it. 
So you're going to start seeing lefty out in these three gun competitions. I'm crossing my yes. fingers here. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and then of course, you know, hooking us up with discounts, you know, this, this, uh, safari land discount, 40% off. That's all due to Keith, you know? So go, go thank him for that. Keith, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to be on. Um, we met, golly, was it like five years ago? At shot, I yeah, think it was at I shot think, show. Yeah, it was me, me, Kalani, and Rick uh, Birdsall were uh, sitting down with you, and uh, you guys was, were was, with was the... Cobalt at the time. Correct. Oh, Cobalt Kinetics. We had the Badger, the Silver Fox, the what, the Crazy Hawaiian. What were they calling him? <laughs> the, the Jedi. The Jedi. The Jedi. Yeah, the the Hawaiian Jedi, and Nick. What was Nick's nickname? Oh, Nick, yeah. He had the uh, stash yeah, we, at the time. We, we, we called him a lot of stuff, and that's not what his face. <laughs> I call him Beastmaster. Uh, yes, no, he's, he's, he does a great job of that. You know, I've not I've not talked to Nick in a while. Have you talked to him in a while? Uh, no, I just uh, follow him and, and see his exploits from his hunting stuff. On, his exploits. Uh, on, on social. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's a good dude. I've been hunting with him uh got to get him back on soon so we'll we'll try to make that happen too absolutely and then um did you want to give any of your sponsors a plug real quick uh you know for the video it really wouldn't happen without uh, oakley hornady real ammunition uh and and just on hornady and rio you gotta have great ammo and those are things that, that you know it's gonna make your life a lot easier uh pof usa is, is just you know been fantastic sponsor uh, with great products, Akai Custom Guns, uh, Brady USA Shotguns. And honestly, uh, I couldn't do any of it without Spartan support. So thank you to that. Very good. Leadheads, I hope you all have a great and safe 4th of July and Independence Day week, weekend, two weeks, however long you, you wish to celebrate. Don't let anybody put you in a box. It's just got to be for one day. Take Take your time and enjoy our our freedoms that we have here in the United States and don't let anybody try to take them away from you. You got to fight for your rights and sometimes, you know, it, it's not always pretty, but you got to do it. So keep fighting for your rights, keep fighting for this country and keep tuning in to the Talking Lead podcast. And until next time, as always, lead heads, keep your loved ones close and keep your firearms closer. And do some training this weekend. After you uh, sober up, uh, check out Pantheo.com. Take a look for uh, how to train for three-gun video, and have a great Fourth of July.